It's another nice matchup for Penn State as they take on the Spartans on Black Friday between an elite defense and a Michigan State team that really isn't doing anything right. Penn State should not have any problem covering, but also putting up some points out in Detroit at the Lions football field. You are locked on Nittany Lions, your daily podcast on the Penn State Nittany Lions, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And that is right. You are locked on Nittany Lions. Thanks so much for making us your first listen and watch every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I am your host, Zach Seiko. Thanks so much for joining me on this episode. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use promo code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Going to talk about the game. I'm going to break it down. We're going to analyze it, how Penn State's going to approach it, how Michigan State is going to try to do some things. I mean, it's a lost cause for them this season. But they got to rebuild, maybe some things to look forward to, and just some names to watch. And then what bowl game, what bowl game that Penn State will be setting up with in this one? Uh, before we get to any and all of it, help out the channel. Subscribe to Locked on Nittany Lions on YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. Let me know in the comments who you think is winning this one by what score and any any players that are going to have some standout performances. And as always, with these preview and prediction episodes, we start with the prediction and then we defend it and how it will go about. This one's at 730 on Black Friday. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody, to each and every one of you. Appreciate all the support. I am thankful for you and I'm thankful that you're checking out this episode. So Penn State is going to beat Michigan. We know that. But by how much? I say 38 to 10 with the possibility of this one really getting out of control. I don't think Penn State's going to have any issues with this one. Like I said, an elite defense, top five run defense, top 25 pass defense. Pass defense has taken a little bit of a step back against a Michigan State team that's got a redshirt freshman quarterback that was supposed to be QB3 going into the season. But then Peyton Thorne transfers, Noah Kim gets banged up, and in steps Kayton Hauser. I, I mean, this Michigan State team has players here and there, but a lot of them are banged up now. So uh, Penn State will be able to out-talent them, out-class them in the regular season finale at Ford Field, the Detroit Lions home field that just saw them lose to the Green Bay Packers. Not exactly Sean Clifford, Clifford led, but you like to think of that, Clifford getting the win out there. And besides the point, but Penn State will win 38-10. to 10. That means they will cover. And that means that total will go over as well. The official sports book of Locked On FanDuel has that set at 21 for a point spread and 42 for a total. Again, let me in the, know in the comments what your score prediction is. Now, here's what Penn State's going to be able to do besides using that elite defense. Now, Drew, Drew Aller is not 100% from, from what we saw going in and at practice. Wasn't really throwing the football a whole lot. Again, the media gets about 10 to 15 minutes to watch and see what happens. He ran some drills, ran the football, but he wasn't exactly throwing it. Here's the thing that's held Penn State back for a a little bit of the time. How do do they match up with with Michigan State? Well, Michigan State's run defense is actually pretty decent. Uh, I'll give them credit where credit's due. They do not allow a ton of yards, and... For what it's worth, I mean, they did win last week. They did beat Indiana. Uh, I think uh, in a game like this, Michigan State can try to pull out all the stops, maybe some trickery, because they don't have anything to lose. Penn State doesn't win this game. The New Year's Six Bowl is out of the question, so you have to look at that at that from that angle. But then again, Penn State, like I said, is just way more talented than Michigan State. If this was outdoors, really cold because we've seen that Penn State doesn't exactly play very well up in East Lansing. This one's inside. With the passing game, though, Michigan State's defense, run defense anyway, is okay. It's decent. It's not It's not the best, but it's certainly not the worst. For the pass defense, though, that's where Penn State's going to be able to have a little bit of an advantage. And I know what everyone's thinking. Oh, Drew Aller hasn't been good this season. The wide receivers are getting a bunch of 
a Slack, Keandre Lambert Smith, Dante Cephas, any of them. They haven't been all that great. And that's and that's true against Ohio State and against Michigan. But against West Virginia, against Maryland, those kinds of teams where the matchup works, Indiana, Penn State's going to be able to have its way in the passing game. Uh, even if Drew Aller's not 100%. So that's fine. Sell out for the run. Take away Nicholas Singleton, Katron Allen. I'm sure those guys will have okay days, but I'm actually looking towards the passing game. I think Drew Aller will have uh, his typical efficient day. No turnovers. He's not going to throw the ball a whole bunch because the, the shoulder, the throwing arm is not 100% from what we've seen. We don't have any reports. We don't have any indications from coach. He says everything's status quo, but that's pretty typical tight to the vest type of stuff. You're not going to get any more than that. What else does that mean in this case? If Drew Aller is not 100% from what we've seen and the logical conclusion that we can come to because you pulled him out of the Rutgers game. Why would you pull him out of the Rutgers game if he wasn't 100% after clearing the blue medical tent, right? Bo Prabula is a capable backup quarterback here. And I'm not here to debate. I have other episodes devoted to that. So go check those out. But both Prabula and Drew Aller are both going to be utilized in this game where Penn State's really going to benefit because Michigan State is good, is okay. Is oh, I won't get up too far ahead of myself, right? The Spartans are okay at taking away the running backs. But what they're really not good at is taking away a mobile quarterback. Indiana was averaging quite the clip on the ground last week. And you're thinking, okay, the Hoosiers, why are they getting a ton of rushing yards? Because Brendan Soresby is a dual threat quarterback and not, I don't want to say had his way on the ground, but Indiana had no issues running the football all that much aside from, of course, Michigan state did get the win and that's what matters the most, but Indiana was able to move the football on the ground. I think Penn state's going to get very strategic here. Drew Aller might throw about 25, maybe 30 passes. Uh, he doesn't really have to, but I think they're going to get creative now in, in this sense. We saw Bo Prabula with some, it's not even trick plays. They're not even going to bring out those kinds of packages where Bo Prabula, and they might for a play or two, but it's not going to be, they're not going to overdo that. But what might happen is Bo Prabula comes in through Aller subs out and Bo Prabula keeps it or maybe runs a drive or two actually in the middle of the game when it's not out of control. He's not just going to come back in. Penn State saw the film. Penn State saw, okay, if Brendan Soresby can do this kind of damage against Michigan State's defense, what can Bo Prabula do? And Mike Yersich was fired. Of course, this is only the second game since he's been let go. You had not one, but two first-time play callers at Penn State take over and Jay Wan Sider and Ty Howe. I totally respect the football minds that they are, but they still have to get used to and be comfortable in a play-calling role. Well, now you have that second week. Rutgers defense it is better than people give them credit for. They are a top-five pass defense. They are a top 30 run defense, if you can actually believe that. They took away Penn State's wide receivers. Penn State fully committed to the run. But now a Michigan State defense that is pretty much barely top 100. I shouldn't even call it top 100. Bottom, <laughs> bottom 100 here and closer. Uh, they're about ranked 88 in terms of pass defense. So Bo Prabula is probably going to be able to pull off some passes. We haven't really seen him attempt much. Drew Aller, the wide receivers will get open. And then the elite defense to go along with it will be able to grind the game down to a halt. That's Penn State's formula. They're going to jump out to a lead, rely on turnovers. Caten Hauser is a redshirt freshman. He's only played. This is the first full-time experience of college football. Penn State's defense will be able to get after him. He's not extremely mobile. He can move, but he's not the he's not a true dual threat quarterback. And I actually I like him a lot. I like him as a prospect. I think he could have a good college football career if he continues to develop the right way. He attended Elite 11, um, but Michigan State's too banged up on both sides of the football, too. Offensive line, it's bad. In the trenches, it is just bad, period, for Michigan State. So the matchup's not exactly ideal. So take Penn State to cover. Take the total to go over, because Penn State, I think I might be a little generous with the fact that Michigan State is going to be held, uh, is going to hold Penn State to 38 points as it is. This one could get really out of control just under the circumstances. Michigan State doesn't have anything to play for. It's all about the next chapter. Who are they going to get as a head coach? They can't even play for themselves in a bowl game. Maybe if they go five and seven, they'd have to wait around for the committee to make that decision of some other teams opt out, whatever, right? If there's some open slots. But Michigan State's season 
is completely over. Penn State's got a New Year's Six bowl game to play for. Penn State is very healthy. A, a couple for some other, everyone's back to full strength. All of the main players, the starters, even the key role guys are all healthy. That is something to be said. I hate that Penn State missed out on an opportunity to play in the college football playoff or even contend for a spot there because everything set up nicely for the Nittany Lions and somehow they fumbled it. Okay. Besides the point, Penn State wins 38 to 10. Michigan State just does not have the depth this time around. It's indoors, so you don't have to deal with any East Lansing conditions, unpredictable stuff, just the cold. It's going to be a nice, controlled temperature type of game under a dome. Penn State wins, of course, and cover, easy cover, and it might even get a little more out of control than just that. But there are some names to know. I've already mentioned that Drew Aller is probably going to have a standard day. If you maybe th north of three touchdowns, wide receivers. Could anybody step up on Penn State side? Who is who needs to be stopped on Michigan State side? There are a couple names that are worth noting for the Spartans, and we'll discuss those in just. I want to tell you about one of our sponsors on today's episode, and that is eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. EB Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. And with 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. And the Locked On Podcast Network is proud of this one. Launching something brand new. And it's 24 7 nonstop sports for you on Locked On Sports Today. That's right. You get the 24 7 network going all the time to talk about the NFL, Major League Baseball, NHL, your co favorite college teams, including Locked On Nittany Lines. It's over at Locked On Sports Today. Go subscribe and check out the official 24 7 streaming channel that has sports coverage for you 24 7, 365. Penn State, we'll start with the Nittany Lions as far as what names are going to have a big day. Drew Aller, I think, will have a standard day. I'm looking for Bo Prabula to have a, a little more run in this game, uh, be more of a 50-50 split. So not necessarily 50-50, but you will see Bo Prabula come in more because his talent can really be utilized in this matchup. Michigan State, good, okay at defending running backs, but the mobile quarterback, not so much. And with Drew Aller's not 100% right throwing shoulder, I, I think Bo Prabula, this is an opportunity for him to continue to build on his confidence and see what he can do because I open up the quarterback battle again with a new offensive coordinator. Even though Drew Aller is, he's got the better arm, okay? He is the former five star. I get that. But Bo Prabula has not gone away. He prepares like he's the starter. The team very much respects him. He is a workout warrior in the offseason. Give him credit where it's due here. Bo Prabula is not just some fringe backup. I don't think he's taking the job away from Drew anytime soon. However, I think he deserves some opportunities here down the stretch in a game like this where, yes, it's a must win to get to your New Year's Six Bowl. But in this case, there, there's Michigan State's not going to offer a, a lot of resistance here. So Bo Prabula is a key name to watch for Penn State. I'll go with Keandre Lambert-Smith here as another name for Penn State. as He's been held absolutely silent. I haven't heard from him in, in quite some bit, uh, in, quite, in quite some time. Penn State did not do anything in the passing game against Rutgers, did not do anything against Michigan, did not really do much against Iowa State. We know the key games, but Henry Lambert Smith in particular has been really silent. Had a decent, had a pretty good game, right? Uh, over 90 yards against Maryland, and Dante Cephas had the two touchdowns. But in the biggest moments, Henry Lambert Smith uh, had just, hasn't been able to show up. This is a game, I think, where he can kind of have his revenge for the regular season. 
Jerry's still out. What he's going to do? Is he going to come back? Is he going to go to the NFL? He still has the extra eligibility. And yes, Penn State could use a veteran like him in the wide receiver room next year, even though there's probably going to be a complete overhaul. Overhaul. Is he a part of that overhaul? Or is he going to stick around? Regardless, final game, final regular season game for him at, at, in this season. We, we don't know what's going to happen, but let's assume that it is because he has been playing college football for quite some time. If Keandre Lambert Smith does decide to leave, this is his last chance to kind of leave it all out there. Actually performs very well against Michigan State, had an incredible game last year, and then set that up for the Rose Bowl. I think you can have a similar type of setup here in 2023 against Michigan State. Like I said, I like to, when, when players have cold perform, they'll go on a cold streak or they'll have performances. I like to buy low in these spots. Keandre Lambert Smith is in a perfect buy low spot. He is for what it's worth, the best wide receiver in the room. He has been the guy to make big plays, whether it was against West Virginia. Game-saving play against Indiana, right? It is there. It's just capped a little bit when you start to face those elite defenses. Michigan State is far from an elite defense. There aren't any cornerbacks that can keep up with him. I, I like I like Keandre Lambert-Smith to probably have close to 100 yards in this game. I wouldn't be surprised if it's another performance over 75, a creeping towards that 100-yard mark if he does not have it, and a touchdown, too. He also, he didn't score touchdowns in some of those games outside of the Indiana one that I mentioned, but he was held scoreless uh, against, against uh, Maryland a, as well. The, the tight ends are probably going to be a factor, too. Tyler Warren, Theo Johnson, Drew Aller's favorite red zone targets, but Michigan State knows this. Michigan State's going to game plan to try to take away, to at least limit what Penn State does uh, around the line of scrimmage with the tight ends and the running backs. Therefore, I, I think, again, Lambert Smith, Liam Clifford, any of those guys, Dante Cephas, whoever's out there, Caden Saunders, I think the wide receivers will be the focus of the Penn State offense when Drew is a quarterback, and then Bo Fabula will be able to get some big chunk plays as well. Defensively, you could really go anywhere for Penn State. Any of the guys could step up because Caden Hauser is going to make mistakes. He's going to turn the ball over. He's still very inexperienced. Uh, we'll get to some Michigan State players that you need to be aware of offensively and some defensive guys too. But uh, from, from Michigan State in this, in this case, going up offensively against Penn State's defense, there's really nothing they can do to stop Chop Robinson, deny Dennis Sutton. It's just a matter of how much are some of these guys going to play. Because I look at a Chop Robinson and it's, do you really want to expend him at this point in the season? You are playing for a New Year's Six Bowl, but Penn State really does respect the fact that if a guy has an opportunity to get drafted high, Chop Robinson's going to go in the first round. Definitely all guaranteed at this point, but it's a matter of how high. I see him as a top 10 overall prospect. If Chop Robinson's not going to play as much in the game, I would say that's the case for Adisa Isaac. Adisa Isaac is a, it can be a day two pick. He really could be. So deny Dennis Sutton, enter deny Dennis Sutton back into the chat who took over against Indiana, could probably take over in this game against Michigan State. So I, I like him to do that. Other guys who are probably in a position to not necessarily go into the draft, but stick around and have a big game. Think of guys like Jalen Reed. Jalen Reed's from Michigan, returning to the home area. Kalen King could probably be put in that same category. Kobe King as well, the King brothers from the Michigan area, right? This is a homecoming for them in a sense. I like Kobe King and Jalen Reed to have big games as well because I don't anticipate those guys going into the draft. If they do, kudos to them. I think another season at Penn State for them will be very beneficial, but you have to weigh how is Penn State going to approach playing these guys for Kalen King, Chop Robinson, Adisa Isaac, guys who you really do assume are going into the NFL draft, even they, even though they say, well, my decision's not made and I haven't really thought about it. Come on. We've seen the mock drafts. We've seen you guys play on the field. We know that you're headed to the NFL and that you're going to take, you're going to not make the wrong decision here. Capitalize on what you've done in this time and use that because things could possibly go wrong if you come back for another season. But those, those types of players that are probably going to be around for another season, if not two at Penn State, they have an opportunity. I like Jalen Reed. I like Deny Dennis Sutton, Kobe King at all three levels to have big days for Penn State. We've been waiting for Zach Key Wheatley to have an interception. Maybe he gets a little more playing time. It's tough to say because Keaton Ellis is, is a senior. He's 
this is his last year. There's no debating it. There's no other eligibility. The captain, I wonder if he gets any extra playing time since it's, he's winding down his time with the Nittany Lions. But I've been waiting for a Zachy Wheatley interception. Just kind of uh, toss that one out there. It's not, not necessarily a long shot, but maybe something to uh, think about. As Wheatley's been very quiet as the bona fide turnover king from the offseason, right? For, for Michigan State, I've mentioned Caden Hauser, uh, and that's easy. Nathan Carter, I, I'm not sure. Uh, Jalen Berger, I'm not, I'm not really sure what, what happened to him. I guess part of the injuries, I can't uh, assume what's happened, but that transfer from Wisconsin. Uh, Nathan Carter's been the one to take over. The one that you really need to focus on, if Caden is going to go to anybody, it's Malik Carr. Malik Carr, the tight end, veteran tight end. Last week against Indiana, seven receptions, 119 yards, and two touchdowns. Indiana's defense is a little bit different. I feel totally confident whether it's Curtis Jacobs. And that's another one who's going to go into the NFL draft, right? But Curtis Jacobs, Kobe King, Abdul Carter, any of those guys can cover Malik Carr. Malik Carr and also Caten Hauser won't have the time to sit back and, and read the defense and make the right decisions and allow Carr to get open on his routes. Penn State's going to focus on him. They know that he's a key player. They're, they're not going to... Uh, <laughs> They're not going to say, well, we'll, we'll ignore him, though. He, he's the main guy. But also, if you take Michigan State's run away, there, there's nothing they can do because they need the run to set up the pass, even though they're not very good at running the football either. They're not good at anything offensively. Defensively, they're okay against stopping the run. Okay, but uh, they really can't move the ball offensively. They've been shut out this season. Michigan embarrassed them. Who, who cares about the sign stealing? They, they shut them out for that, for that instance. They shut them out uh, in this case. Feel bad for the Spartans. They're looking too far ahead here. I, I really do. I'd like this to be a more competitive ball game. Uh, a, a name to know on defense, and this is why Michigan State's run defense even gets the respect that it has, is Cal Halliday. Cal Halliday is one of the better linebackers in all the Big Ten. I think he'll be playing. He'll start as a role guy in the NFL, but I could see him cracking a roster and getting some playing time early on in his career and then hopefully stepping up as it moves on because Cal Halliday is a gamer for them. I think he's too good for Michigan State uh, and that he's stuck around, but he's one of your traditional, forceful, physical, Big Ten linebackers. And at Penn State, uh, Katron Allen, we could see some, some big hits exchanged between those two players if they happen to meet in the lane. I'm actually kind of excited for that one. Cal Halliday versus Katron Allen. See if there's a little bit of a, a back and forth battle there. Outside of that, there, there's really there's really nothing else for for Michigan State. Uh, if anybody cares, uh, the special teams unit for the Spartans are are good. We we got this one from Matt Sheehan over at Locked On Spartans. Jonathan Kim is a world class kicker apparently, uh, and he will make a long distance field goal, which is why I'm giving Michigan State ten points. I think they can get a garbage time touchdown as Penn State is going to sub players in. This is the last regular season game. Guys are probably going to opt out for the bowl game as well, which we're going to talk about here in just a moment. Michigan State, I, I think, will be able to get some late points, uh, probably maybe a field goal somewhere. Uh, they'll, they'll move the ball at some point as those guys continue to sub out, maybe like a last-second touchdown, uh, if you will. But it'll be a nice day for the Nittany Lions, and a lot of guys will see some additional playing time. But what does that do for the bowl game? People have asked me, hey, Zach, where do you think Penn State is going to play uh, for the New Year's, are they going to make a New Year's Six Bowl game? Because they've lost to Ohio State and Michigan, and frankly, they haven't beaten any other high-caliber opponents. West Virginia and Maryland, yeah, that's great, but elite teams, mm -mm, they haven't done it. So let's talk about that. Let's debate that, and I'll give you my prediction of who, what bowl game they're going to make and what team they're probably going to face. And before we get to that, let's hear from another one of our sponsors on today's episode and that is Game Time. You got to download the Game Time app because buying tickets to your favorite events should not be stressful. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all your favorite sports, music, comedy, and theater events, anything that is near you. Some of the things that I like about the Game Time, game time app experience because I've used Game Time myself the flash deals on the last minute ticket. So I'm already okay. So maybe I'm choosing to go to an event last second and I'm getting a deal on the fact that I'm already getting great last-second tickets. It's easy to find and buy tickets in your area. They're sorted, so you don't have to the hassle of going to find what event is coming to you. And then probably the best feature of them all 
is deep view. You get to see in the app where you're going to, what the view is going to be like when you're sitting. So there's no second guessing. Am I getting the right tickets? You know ahead of time of what you're going to see and watch before you even get to the venue. Lowest price guaranteed, including event cancellation protection. Snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app and create an account and use promo code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On College for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. And in this final segment, let's discuss the bowl game. Penn State's going to make a New Year's Six bowl. I, I firmly believe that. It, Really, when you look at the resume, Penn State's lost to the number two and the number three teams in the country, two perennial college football playoff contenders. And I know the game is on Saturday. It's great. Michigan and Ohio State will sort itself out. Who's going to go to the Big Ten championship? Maybe I should share my prediction on this show, but I like to talk about Penn State more than anything else. But when you look at the resume, Penn State handled business everywhere else. They shut out Iowa, who's going to the Big Ten Championship, right? Iowa's in the top 25. Let's not forget about that game. They beat, they beat the breaks off of Maryland, 51-15. to 15. They won the non-conference games. I'm not talking about Delaware. I'm talking about West Virginia. West Virginia is a bold team this year and was a very respectable opponent from what we saw when they went back into Big 12 play. So it's not like Penn State just beat up on UMass and Delaware types all season. They won every other Big Ten game where we know that they're going to beat Michigan State to, to close out the Big Ten conference play. But the, the debate that, oh, well, Penn State's probably not going to make a New Year's Six Bowl. The New Year's Six committees would be insane. They would be crazy not to take the Penn State Nittany Lions uh, in the bowl games. So the everydayers that know that have been with the show have, have stuck around, have watched it for the longest time because we talked about the Rose Bowl. We had one of the first indications and made the prediction that Penn State was going to go to the Rose Bowl and not necessarily, yes, you had to wait and see who they were going to play against Utah or USC. But there were rumblings about, okay, where is Penn State going to go? And we were one of the first shows to talk about Penn State getting to Pasadena once again, and they did. So a year later, let's see if I'm right on the mark with this one. I got to go with the Peach Bowl as my pick for Penn State. I've explained this before. Some new listeners, some new watchers probably don't know how bowl games actually work. It's a selection committee. They don't say, okay, who's the six seed or who's the 10 seed? Who's the 11? Who's the 24? It, it's not about that. It, it's, strictly, it, it's strictly about market, money. Money makes the world go around, right? Money makes college football go around, as we really learned with NIL. But this is the case with bowl games. The committees will take schools, will take teams, that they haven't had for a long time or haven't had, period. They haven't had, period, right? Penn State shouldn't have been anywhere near the Outback Bowl. That was a New Year's Day game, right? The Outback Bowl where they lost to Arkansas and it wasn't a good game and everything. That was not one of the better Penn State teams. We know this. But the Outback Bowl, that was one of the last ones that I thought they would have played in. Why? Because the Outback Bowl committee sat back and said, we know that we're going to get the ticket sales. We know that we're going to get the merchandise sales. We know we're going to get the viewership on TV. Penn State has never played a school. They play a school like Arkansas very infrequently. That is a cool Big Ten versus SEC matchup. And it did. It drew the numbers, even though the Nittany Lions were blown out, right? But it's really about that. It's what kind of high-profile matchup we can get. The Peach Bowl has not had Penn State. And I don't, I don't think ever, but definitely in quite some time. Penn State and the Peach Bowl, if you listen closely, the Peach Bowl have given interviews, the Peach Bowl executives, and they say, well, you know, what schools are you thinking? And the one quote by one of the higher up executives, Penn State makes a lot of sense for us. Penn State right there. So you don't have to go any further than that. The evidence is right there. He's saying it, so I'm just taking and running with it, right? Penn State makes a lot of sense for the Peach Bowl. There's the possibility they could go back to the Fiesta Bowl, but the Fiesta Bowl has taken them uh, already. This is, again, what it's about. The committees want to have schools that they don't invite very often. It's all about invitation. It's not the NCAA saying you need to take the, the, fifth, best, the fifth best school, the, the sixth best team, and put them together in a matchup. 
It's about what drives viewers, and it's all independent-based. Yes, there's a pecking order. Some bowl games are going to pick before others. But the Peach Bowl, when they're up on the clock, think of it as a draft. It's a draft. When the Peach Bowl is on the clock, Penn State is most likely going to be available. They're going to take Penn State. Now, what team could they ultimately face? That's, that's still yet to be said because we still got another weekend slate of games. I can give some teams that are going to be hypothetically that they could go up against who's playing currently in the Egg Bowl against Mississippi State. Ole Miss. Ole Miss could be a perfect matchup for Penn State. And they're close and they're relative. Oklahoma is another one. The Sooners. I would like, and these, ma- and these matchups, I would not be, I could not wait to break these down and hopefully we'd get enough players not opting out so that this would be a true matchup between Two very quality teams out of this 2023 season, but Oklahoma, Ole Miss. Now, here's the one that people aren't probably going to be excited for because Penn State had this issue going into the Cotton Bowl. Tulane. Tulane. I, I don't want to see them face the Group 5 team. I, I really don't. You you did that against Memphis. We saw how it went. If that's going to be the fate, if that's going to be the case, fine. The Peach Bowl can deal with that and, and the ratings, but people will watch solely because of Penn State. And Tulane is a feel-good story. Hey, they, I, I maybe I shouldn't sweat Tulane because they did beat USC. They they came from behind and beat USC a season ago uh, in that bowl setting. So maybe I shouldn't talk so much trash about the Green Wave, but I would rather see Penn State play the likes of an Ole Miss or an Oklahoma. Those ones make sense, but ultimately the Peach Bowl committee will decide when it is their turn to pick two schools, Penn State's going to be in the Peach Bowl. I, I don't know if I want to jinx it or anything, but they, they've said that. They have admitted that they really want Penn State and that it makes sense for them to do. Now, it's just a matter of who they could play. I think Ole Miss, Oklahoma would be ideal matchups and just ideal setups for the, for the season to finish before we get to that 12-team college football playoff. So a loss here obviously takes Penn State out of the New New Year's Six Bowl consideration, but a win I don't think changes anything. I think the Peach Bowl fully intends to take the Penn State Nittany Lions and put them in the, and that game's on, that game's in Atlanta, of course, right? Uh, And it's going to be on December 29th, even though it's part of the New Year, right? New Year's Six coalition, if you will. But that's my prediction. I don't even know that it can be a prediction because the evidence is right there and the Peach Bowl has said it. The Fiesta Bowl has been won. Again, the Cotton Bowl, the Fiesta Bowl, they have taken Penn State in the past five years. They don't want that. The Peach Bowl, not the case. And that's why I think they'll end up there. I will do it for this edition of Locked On Nittany Lines. I appreciate everyone joining the show, checking it out. We'll look at some comments to wrap up here. We have one from Joel. Get Prabula into the game sooner. Give him some full series of plays throughout the game. I totally agree, and I think that's going to be the case because Michigan State does not defend the running quarterback. And let him throw the football. Yes, I would like to see Bo Prabula actually attempt some passes, but because Michigan State's secondary is not that good, we'll probably get to see more of just that. Penn State needs to play a higher-ranked team in the bowl game. Yes, I do not want to see Tulane. I do not want to say I real I want to get an accurate I'll finish with this and I, and I'll keep it short. For Penn State, this has been the past two seasons at least for me and maybe people feel free to disagree with me and you can let me know in the comments. But Penn State is in college football purgatory because they can't contend. We've seen Michigan State and Ohio State. So okay, we know that they're not truly elite. So Georgia, Florida State if they were at full strength, I know they lost Jordan Travis would probably be easily be able to beat Penn State on a neutral site. So where does that leave them? Because they beat up on team Maryland, bowl team, West Virginia, bowl team, and they blow them out of the water. Iowa, who is the Big Ten West representative, is going to, we'll see how the Nebraska game shakes out, right? But they're either going to be 9-3 and three, they're ten, or 10-2. Ten and two. They're a top 25 team, and Penn State embarrassed them 31 to nothing. So how good are the Nittany Lions actually? You put them up against a Tulane, we don't know for sure. Well, if, we lo- if they lose that game, we definitely, do- we definitely know just how they, how they should be evaluated. But I want to see them go up against an Oklahoma. I guess you could throw around a Washington. I think Washington makes the college football playoff. I really like what Kalen DeBoer has done with this team this year. Some people have projected that. But Oklahoma and Ole Miss, 
two very, very good, very, I would say elite offenses going up against that Penn State defense. That'd be a nice matchup. And then we finally get to figure out just how good the Nittany Lions were. Are they a firm, solid top 10 team? Or were they really overrated this whole time? And, and Michigan, but I got to look at it. Michigan should have been a one score game. Ohio State was a one score game. Penn State got closer, but it wasn't enough to push through the glass ceiling. Oklahoma, Ole Miss, yes, Washington as well, but I don't think they'll play them in a bowl game. But those two schools would be great measuring sticks evaluations for Penn State to see just how actually good they are. And that'll do it for this edition of Locked on Nittany Lines. If you haven't already, become an everydayer. Subscribe to the channel on YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. Let me know your score prediction. Does Penn State cover in a game that is completely meaningless for the Spartans? I think they do. I think they do. But I want to hear what you think about the Nittany Lines, if they can finish out the regular season strong. We'll have Penn State basketball coverage, too, coming up as football's getting ready to end. Men's basketball, I know they suffered the first loss of the season, but they look pretty good against a top 15 Texas A&M team that was out for revenge. I'm excited about this men's basketball team, and you should be too. So for more conversations around all Penn State athletics, keep it here on Locked On Nittany Lions.